title of this talk is, is it absolutely safe to discard sperm catalyst after pre oxidation? This is a good question, actually. And, and Avir and Silva, Dr. Alfonso, thank you very the final destination to be given to spent catalysts. This work has been done with the analytical chemistry department of the Institute of Chemistry, Federal Trust of the Brazil, since 1997. And this project has a financial support from the public Brazilian organisms, GAPS, Fuji, CPQ, and BB, which has given to scholar, uh, scholarships to this my under undergraduate students. Well, first of all, the United States Environmental Protection Agency has recognized in recent years that the spent catalyst for damage nature is a very dangerous industrial waste because they may contain general heavy metals, they may contain carcinogenic compounds they tend to be corrosive to the environment, may release toxic gases along the time, and also are subject to spontaneous burn. Therefore, it's easy to understand <coughs> that the spent catalyst is a powerful source of contamination on the ground, water, and more than vegetable life in general. The Environmental Protection Agency, as well as the European community have published since 1996 some several directories concerning the final destination of spent catalysts as well as other petroleum wastes. And in the case of spent samples, the pre oxidation is an optional step that must be performed at high temperatures before discarding a spent catalyst in an industrial dump. This pre oxidation has two clear objectives. First of all, the organic matter must be eliminated, after which the inorganic components must react themselves to form water and soluble compounds, which are less toxic, less dangerous to environment. However, there are no fixed rules concerning this pre-oxidation. This is easily understood if you take into account the existence of many catalysts and also many different industrial processes where the catalysts are employed nowadays. Also, the lifetime of the catalyst has a great influence on the pre-oxidation procedure that must be adopted. I mean, if the, the industrial process are conducted under strong or mild experimental conditions, this will have a great influence on the pre-oxidation. Therefore, the pre-oxidation must be, some pre-oxidation temperatures should be tested before applying work with the wall spent catalyst. The objective of this work was to study the behavior of a typical spent industrial catalyst that was submitted to different pre-oxidation treatments. In fact, the aim is to check their effectiveness with respect to the non-solubilization of the catalyst composite. The samples obtained after pre-oxidation, as well as the spent catalyst used as a reference, were buried in the ground in order to determine the solvent profile of all components along the time and perhaps a possible commitment of the surrounding environment. The catalyst employed in our study was a traditional and common hydrotreating EO alumina catalyst, which was used for about three years for hydrotreatment diesel jet fuel practice in a Brazilian petroleum environment. It was kept in its original form and it was not regenerated during its lifetime. As you can see from the elemental analysis, this catalyst contains two common additives, phosphorus and zinc. The pre-oxidation pre procedure was very simple. We have used a laboratory furnace where the catalyst was placed in and the 
temperature by throwing it from room temperature up to 873 Kelvin or 1273 Kelvin at a rate of 5 Kelvin per minute. After, we, and after which the temperature was kept for 5 hours, always at atmospheric pressure. During this procedure, we have observed the water elimination of water by the absorption, elimination of coke as carbon oxides. We have observed also some SO2 uh, obtained by oxidation of sulfide species in the catalyst, because this catalyst, of course, was used in sulfide form in its lifetime, and no losses of, of other elements were observed. After cooling inside the furnace, the treated catalyst was placed into clean tin boxes. These boxes are exactly the same as those used for food, uh, milk, chocolate, coffee, and so on. Ordinary tin boxes that were tightly closed prior, prior to burning. The spent catalyst used here lost more or less one quarter of its original weight after oxidation due to all these phenomena present. The tin boxes were buried at a depth of 30 or 50 centimeters, and samples from some were taken at intervals between 40 and 70 days. The catalysts were buried during summer, which is a rainy, hot, and a lovely season in Rio de Janeiro, and it is expected to have a great effect on catalyst evolution along the time. And simply also I spent it during one year. Now you have the average weather conditions in Rio de Janeiro during the last four years. One, we can observe a slight decrease on precipitation level as well as a slight decrease on average relative humidity and a, a somewhat decrease of average temperature due to La Nina and El Nino. After sampling, the catalyst was weighed in order to determine its gain of weight, and it was submitted to an extraction procedure of solvent compounds in a traditional subsilent apparatus using solvents in rising polar order. Methylcopidin for the solid ordinary solid local, methanol for more, or more, more polar organic compounds and some inorganic species, and finally water to solubilize than some inorganic species. Ethanol was first eliminated under the wing, after which the residue was dissolved in dilute hydrochloric acid, and the polar organic compounds present were extracted with chloroform. All organic and inorganic species were characterized by means of the traditional methods, analytical methods. Now, we are going to discuss the results, and first of all, we will get some insight into the overall solubility of the components of the deactivated nickel catalyst. The results present here shows those from the deactivated catalyst that was not fully oxidized. As you can see, as time goes by, aluminum and phosphorus become fully unsolvable, whereas nickel, molybdenum, and sulfur show the quantitative solubilization levels. When catalyst was pre-oxidized at 873 <coughs> Kelvin, again, aluminum and phosphorus become fully soluble along the time. A drastic decrease on solubility of molybdenum was achieved, however, the solubility of nickel and sulfur was even important after six months, more or less six months, in the ground. More or less one quarter of the outer nickel was, was even solid. And when oxidation was performed at a high temperature level, the, solubility, the final solubility of nickel and sulfur, sulfur as a sulfate species are not net cannot be neglected, but reached a much lower level. A pre 
oxidation procedure must ensure a focus mobilization of the catalyst components. And this overall solubility was only achieved when the sample was emitted at very high temperature levels. For this catalyst oxidizer at 1273 Kelvin, X ray diffraction fluorescence data showed the classical results for hypertreating catalysts submitted to high submitted to high temperature levels. The formation of signals and monomidate like compounds, also interaction between aluminum and phosphorus forming aluminum phosphate, and also the sintering of the catalyst. Another set of results concerns the immediate effect of the oxidation treatment on the solubility of the sun. For the deactivated sun, more or less half of our nickel was soluble with water or in methanol after immediate after treatment. For the pre-oxidation samples, the solubility level decreased to 50 fold in the case of the sample pre-oxidized at very high temperature. In fact, again, the thermal treatment must be very drastic to be effective. And pre-oxidation conditions must ensure a focal solubility of our components, not only just after the process as seen here, but also along the time as seen in our previous results. Just, just only because we must prevent an environmental commitment in the future. The pH data of the catalyst itself and also the aqueous extract obtained after subsequent procedure shows that they are shown that they are always acids. And however, the acidity decreases as the temperature of pre-oxidation increases for both cases. And in general, the pH of the wet catalyst and the aqueous solution are more acidic than the soon neighboring ground, more or less pH 5, except for the catalyst treated at very high temperature, where the pH data didn't show any significant difference. Why this, this, uh, this, why this uh, the pH, both of the wet catalyst and the echo solution are acid? Simply because in the case of the deactivated sample, which presents coke, there are carboxylic acids and also phenols among the coke. And as a general explanation, there are extensive products of the solubilized cations from the catalyst, aluminum, nickel, and others. As you can see here, an effect of the spent catalyst on the environment, on environmental. Uh, point of view is that the expected catalyst can modify the pH of the surrounding drought, which will affect the chemistry of land and life. An origin of the water found in the catalyst, there are basically two reasons. The catalyst may have got some water to be preparing for the handling of the samples after pre oxidation, and also in the case of the deactivated catalyst, the oxidation of both structures along the time may generate water as seen in previous studies. Of course, if the catalyst was placed into a tin box, this box is subjected to a corrosion along the time. And in fact, for the deactivated sample, an extensive corrosion of the upper of the bottom and also the lateral wall, internal walls of the, of the box was, was observed. Therefore, the solubilization, the solubilization of iron was much more high than the total amount present in the deactivated chemicals. After pre oxidation, at a lower temperature range, the amount of soluble iron was much less important. And finally, when the same catalyst was oxidized at a high temperature, the solubilizer was even less important. It's easy to observe that the state of the deactivated catalyst has a marked influence on the corrosion of the tin pots. The iron content 
something I don't understand. The scientific one, when you are uh, in pretreatment, you oxidize at high temperature, you go up to 1000 degrees C, and you go up to 1000 degrees C in the pretreatment, eh? in the oxidizing pretreatment. Uh, in the, so then in you can the pretreatment, 
sodium and potassium, but in amounts that are not are much more, much less important than the the less the, the less abundant component, which is phosphorus. Uh, I like your talk, but I want to know what is your recommendation? Let us say if you want to send back the smelters for recycling. Well, the best way to solve this problem, you see, you, you can develop a new generation of catalysts that are more, more, much more resistant towards the activation, or you, you, we can prove some regeneration procedures for uh, industrial catalysts. But one day in the future, we will be obliged to deal with the problem of a spent non measurable sample. Uh, and in my own personal opinion, the best way to solve this problem is to recycle. And one of the ways that I know that has been made elsewhere is to send for the for the metallurgical. It's to employ the same metallurgical process applied to nickel minerals. Perhaps it may be a solution. Thank you.